guys hi and welcome back to my channel i'm super super excited this is my first video of 2022 i hope you all had a good year i hope you all had a great happy new year and i'm just super excited to have you back so if you're a subscriber welcome back to my video welcome back to my channel my name is naomi and then if you're new to the video hi and welcome how are you i hope you're good i'm good too so you know what it's all about, it's 2022, I'm sure we're all working on those new year resolutions, we're trying to get those scholarships, those admissions, look no further, I bring you the perfect video today. So in today's video, we're going to be discussing the top 8 scholarships. If you're looking for fully funded scholarships um, to study abroad, this is the perfect video for you. So we're going to be looking at top 8 fully paid scholarships for the year 2022. So the scholarships that I'm going to be bringing you today, I know that there are scholarships that run every year. So each and every year you are sure of the scholarships that are going to be offered unless something happens, I don't know. But for the past couple of years, the scholarships have been going on. And then the good thing about the scholarship is that, you know, some of them, all of them, majority of them, all eight of them are targeted at um, African students, you know they have specific countries and then they award a certain number of scholarship to those countries and African countries we are included so why not go for it why not go for it this is a perfect opportunity for you so I'm going to be making reference to my notebook here so if I keep looking down it's just because I'm checking the points to see if I do not forget anything without any delays without any further ado let's start this and then let's do this so the number one scholarship to look out for, especially if you're in Botswana, South Africa, Zimbabwe, Zambia, all those countries, the first one we have the Russian Federal Scholarship. The Russian Federal Scholarship. I'll write the name somewhere here in the video. You will see it pop out. So this is mostly for undergraduate. Okay, let me not say mostly. It's for undergraduate uh, students. If you just finished your senior year, your secondary school, and then you're looking to study your degree, this is the perfect scholarship for you. It is fully paid. That means it covers tuition fees, accommodation fees, there's an allowance. And you know, if you're looking to go into areas, the areas that are covered by the scholarship, we have health, we have agriculture, mechanical, science and technology, all those fields. So if you're interested in one of those fields, then the Russian Federal Scholarship is for you. Now the requirements, uh, the requirement is that requirement number one is that you should have a general secondary education certificate, and then you should be fit conditions in Russia. Russia is a very cold climate so you shouldn't have any underlying health conditions that you know may arise or may trouble you when you have to move to Russia. So those are the things. So that was scholarship number one, the Russian Federal Scholarship. If you're looking for an undergraduate fully paid scholarship, go for it. I mean why not? And then the second scholarship, the second one, which I actually applied for also myself last year, is the UK Commonwealth Scholarship. Now, the UK Commonwealth Scholarship is mostly, why do I keep on saying mostly? It's for master's program. So if you've completed your bachelor's and then you want to go for master's, then the UK Commonwealth Scholarship is for you. It's in UK. It covers masters and then the good thing about this scholarship also is that it covers tuition fee, accommodation fee, health insurance and then you also have um, your monthly allowance. Yes, now the requirements for this scholarship for you to go into the scholarship requirement number one is that you should have a first class. You should have obtained a first class in your uh, undergraduate so that means first class in UB I think it's a GPA of 4.4 4 to a 4.5 out of a 4.0 out of a 5.0 GPA so that's first class and then you should also be prepared to submit a study proposal I would advise that you go into the Department of Tertiary Education because for this scholarship you have to go through um, your Ministry of Education first 
and then the ministry has to select you and then that's when you can go on with the online application for the commonwealth scholarship so what happens is you have to send your documents to dtf if you're in Botswana. be sure to click the uh, dtf official facebook page they normally upload the scholarships so what happens is you have to submit those documents they have a study proposal and then each country has guidelines on study proposal what they want for example Botswana would say how your program will contribute to the development of the country those are those things you have to include in your study plan and then your five-year um, plan after completing your masters what do you plan to do for the country with your education so on and so forth so those are the things to consider like i said for this one the uk commonwealth scholarship you have to first submit it through your ministry of education i don't know which department it would be but for botswana sdtf i don't know for south africa but there has to be a department and then the education the ministry would say would make selections first and then if your proposal is okay they'll contact you via email they sent me an email to say okay you've uh, passed the initial stage now you can move on to the online application and then you do that and i feel like this uk commonwealth scholarship um although it's very competitive i think i'll make a separate video for this one how you write your study proposal you so on so of the essays how you can go about it but for now i'm just mentioning the scholarship that you know you can give it a try so the opening window for the uk commonwealth scholarships is normally december january when i applied last year the deadline was january i mean last of last year was january last year the deadline was in december it's closed for now unfortunately but like i say they go on every year so be on the lookout for it now let's move on to scholarship number three scholarship number three we have the mauritius government scholarship this one the good thing is that it covers both undergraduate and postgraduate so if you want to study your degree or if you want to study your masters your phd so on and so forth so the subject you have um they have specific uh, areas environmental science science health so on and so forth just be sure to check up on them now if you're applying for an undergraduate program under the mauritius scholarship you need to have at least uh, obtained 48 points in your bgcse this is for botswana i don't know what for south africa i'm not sure what the requirements but be on the lookout for the requirements and then if you are pursuing masters uh, you have to have a first class in your bachelor's degree in your degree program if you are pursuing phd you need a first class in your masters so that is it the good thing about the scholarship is that it covers air fees, tuition, um, it covers health, you have an allowance, so on and so forth. And then the documents that you need to submit, you need to submit your CVs, you need to submit your references, your medical report. Now, I know medical report is a bit much for most of us, you know, because you have to do all these exams. But majority of scholarships which are fully paid will require will require you <laughs> i'm sorry will require you to have a medical report so i would advise you get started on it and then the medical report has to be um not be not older than <laughs> not older than six months yes and then also you need to submit a research plan and then that was scholarship number three all the scholarships like i said are fully paid the good thing they target african countries so baby girl baby boy go for them and then uh the fourth one which i also applied for this one is a bit challenging but it's very good we have the chinese government scholarship so the chinese government scholarship normally runs from january to february i think the opening date is about to come out so if you are looking to study in china I advise that you go onto your embassy um, your embassy will have details on the scholarships how to apply application dates deadlines so on and so forth so like in Botswana also the then you first have to send um, documents to your ministry and then you can upload onto the and also the Chinese government website that would they would give you on your embassy just go on the chinese embassy in your country they would have those details so the scholarship covers undergraduate masters and phd but last year they were not um, sponsoring undergraduate 
I don't know, it changes. So just confirm, just check in to see if you are eligible. So for undergraduate, you need to have at least 47 points for you to apply to a fully paid scholarship in China. And then you also, for masters, you need a GPA of 2.1. But Hong, most scholarship would want first class, first class, first class. But the Chinese government scholarship is a GPA of 2.1. 2.1 i mean there's a free scholarship right here like they're literally saying just come and study your masters just come do it with the gp of 2.1 guys come on like <sighs> anyways and then for phd you need a first class in your masters there's the chinese government scholarship now this one they are a lot of documents that are required for instance, you need your medical report, your medical documents, so you need to do your medicals. Uh, number two, you need your criminal record, your police clearance to say you don't have any criminal... Uh, criminal what? You don't have any... Yes, you haven't done any crimes in the past. <laughs> and then also your certificates, your transcripts, your references, and then you also have a study plan. I'll do a full video on this Chinese scholarship from application classes, how you write your study proposal, how you write so on and so forth, to the interviews, how to ace your interviews, so on and so forth. Yes. And then that was scholarship number four, the Chinese government scholarship. And they cover accommodation, they cover tuition. And then unfortunately this one, uh, the airplane, the airfare, you have to buy it for yourself. They don't give airfare. And then the monthly allowance is also very good. It's a lot of money. And then we have the fifth one. We have the Serbia scholarship. So if you want to go to Serbia, I should actually visit Serbia one day. I want to visit Serbia one day. So if you want to go to Serbia, the scholarship offers undergraduate and masters. So they are targeting areas such as agriculture, business, construction, so on and so forth. So for undergraduate, you need to have gotten 48 points in your secondary education. Now this is Botswana system, by the way, I'm mentioning Botswana system. But for South Africa, Zimbabwe, Zambia, I think it will be different because they use a different system. And then um, for your masters, you need first class still. And then the application documents, you need to uh, submit an application form, you need to submit your CV, passports, transcript, medical exam. So far, all the scholarships that I've mentioned, they have a medical exam. And then your study plan, you also have to do study plan if you're going into masters. But if you're doing bachelor's, undergraduate, you don't really need a study plan. I don't know why my camera is it keeps on getting out of focus i'm sorry about that if it's annoying i'm very very sorry i don't know maybe i'm moving a lot i'm not sure anyways scholarship number six which is a very very competitive one of my favorites we have the shivening scholarship now the shivening the opening dates are around october now be careful because this dates vary from country to country and but then it might be october but in zambia it might not really be october so be on the lookout for that now for this scholarship for shivening you need to have a acceptance letter from one of the schools in uk so basically you have to apply to a university in the uk you have to have they have to give an acceptance and then when you have your acceptance, that's when you can apply for the Shivening Scholarship. The Shivening Scholarship will cover, you know, everything, tuition, accommodation, health insurance, for the duration that you're going to be studying. And then this is also for masters. This is only for masters. Unfortunately, it's not for undergrads. It's for masters education. And then the required documents is you need to have your educational documents, your... Uh, certificates transcripts your references your offer letter like i mentioned and then you also need three years working experience now when i attended the shivening seminar they were saying the three years doesn't mean you have to have like a fully a nine to five job type of thing you know if for example you were studying um in the university of Botswana, and then you had a part-time job 
those hours still count as long as you can account for them it doesn't mean like you have to be strictly working for three years no those three years can be divided into hours and so on and so forth and then also this shepherding uh, scholarships has a lot of essays you need to have your leadership essay your volunteer work essay so you know i think there are about three essays so be prepared to write and shivening is very very competitive but uh, there's a lot of social media groups that help that you know learners just offering assistance on one another in terms of applying for the shivening scholarship so be on the lookout for that and then the seventh scholarship that i have prepared for you today is the fulbright scholarship which is offered by the usa so if you want to study in the u.s the fulbright scholarship is for you you need your documents um and then also this one is for masters so you need to have your documents your cv your passport documents your study plans ready your essays and then the windows will also vary depending on country to country so you need to be careful of that and then they also require a three-year working experience like i say just like in the shivening one it doesn't necessarily have to say you have to be employed for three years your part-time job still counts your volunteer hours still count those make a difference and then the last scholarship that i have for you is the Taiki bashi scholarship i hope i pronounced that correctly please don't crucify me just correct me just correct me guys so you have the Taiki scholarship now this one would run for the year 2022 it's starting on the 10th of january and then it will end on the 20th of february so if you're looking to study into uh to Taiki, be sure you catch this one and you apply for it and then the Taiki scholarship that covering both undergraduate masters and phd so if you're looking for any of those scholarships be sure to check them out and then you need to have your documents your certificates and then your volunteer experience and then you need to be able to uh, upload because all the scholarship is online but the taking one you need to upload you know certificates of such volunteer um work certificate so on and so forth but guys that was the end of my eight top scholarships to look out for especially if you are in africa because that good you're not competing with the rest of the world they would have a certain number that they award to your country let's say but then maybe they'll say they want five people from botswana they want six people from zambia it's different so you stand a better chance of actually getting the scholarships and then one advice i would give you with the scholarship be sure that you know each and every detail like i've said make sure that you visit official pages of the scholarships that are shared with you just to go and see if you have everything if everything is correct if you are good if you meet all the requirements and yeah and also don't be lazy with your essays please i beg go don't be lazy with your essays when it comes to scholarships you write my friend you have to write like i said i'm always there to help you i know how painful it is i didn't have anybody to help me when i was going through this whole process but you know for you i'm here use me you know let me help you i'll be more than happy to but anyways that was the end of today's video i hope you liked it i hope you enjoyed if you stay to the end don't forget to like the video don't forget to subscribe to my channel I post videos on tips on how to get scholarships, um, master's applications, interview processes, and also travel vlogs. So if you're into that type of thing, come on, come on now, come on. But thank you guys for joining me. So much love out there. I appreciate it so much for those who keep on contacting me and encouraging me. Thank you guys, you guys are the best. If you have any other questions or if there's something I omitted from my presentation, please be sure to leave a comment on the comment section. But for now, that is all ladies and gentlemen. Thank you and have a blessed day.